Yesterday, I made a video showing you guys one of the most luxurious estates in Abuja, Nigeria. And today, we're going to be meeting the person behind this establishment. He's going to be sharing his story with us and showing us how he was able to build a successful real estate business in Nigeria. Hello guys, how are you doing today? It's Taya I know here again. And today, I have something special for you guys. I am here with Mr. Olainka Baimo who is the CEO of Hall 7 Real Estate Company. Today, he's going to be telling us how he has been able to build a successful real estate company in Nigeria. So how are you? What's up? Very well, nice thank you. you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Social distancing. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, what's up? What's your what's your story generally? How were you able to come up with this awesome establishment? It started some 13 years ago. 13 years. Oh, yeah. okay. Came into Abuja sometimes in 2004, 2005 for a project, and then the project didn't work out. I decided to stay okay. and look at other opportunities still in the real estate industry. Try to get investors, but of course, the question is, <laughs> what's your experience? Oh, okay, true. You hadn't done anything in the real estate yeah, sector? Yeah, I hadn't done anything in the real estate uh, sector okay. prior. So, okay, I was able to get a few guys, but they're more focused into, you know what, let's just get a contract, let's get a contract. Yeah. And I feel like being a contractor is not entrepreneurship because you always be at the mercy of someone before you can make money. We started, we got a few contracts then, but for me, I had to opt out of the company because I don't want to be a contractor. And then if you start making money from contract, yeah. you actually become very lazy yeah, at true. being creative. So I opted out, had a partner then, then we got started with real estate. I said, okay, we set up a company uh, in 2009 eventually. Of course, we didn't have experience <laughs> and the company failed. I used to hear as well. <laughs> yeah, it failed. Well, we went our separate ways then. In 2013, we started Wholesome. We got our first property, uh, we negotiated, we got it on credit. The first one worked out, the second one worked out. But of course, at the end of the day, we didn't know so much and all of that. So we, we took on a very a bigger project at the time and then uh, it didn't work out very well, okay. you know. But of course, those experiences put together were very fantastic. How was it like growing up? But this did I believe that yeah. you must be in Lagos for you to have exposure. Exposure, yeah. And I just kind of think that you don't have to live in Lagos to have that necessary yeah. exposure. exposure. Yeah. I grew up in Elori and all of that. And then moving over to Port Harcourt and then to Abuja. You know, so I've never lived in Lagos. I've never lived outside the country. You know, I'm a proper Nigerian. Nigerian. <laughs> I just believe that uh, it's not about money. I feel the capital is right in your head. It's not a function of money. I've started three businesses without money. I can say that over and over again, that money is the last thing you need to do any business. The capital is, in, yeah. is right here. Why did you decide to set up your business in Abuja generally? When you look at the MBS statistics, okay. you know, the bulk of the real estate business in Nigeria, I think Abuja has about 22%, then you have Lagos, almost about, uh, some 50% or 50 something percent, then Port Harcourt about 6%, and then the others is shared among the, all among the other, other states. states. And I ask myself, I'd be like, if you have 22%, yeah. and considering our kind of uh, system of government, yeah. everybody comes to Abuja, everybody wants yeah. to have the property. So sure. it becomes a, a thing of pride okay. that I have a property in Abuja. Yeah. I mean, like, you have your square, your square your foot square in foot the that, nation's that, uh, federal that capital would. city. <laughs> you know, I mean, like, so whatever development you would do here, yeah. if we take the same development to any other country in the world, we should be able to compete favorably. True. That's the way I say it. The question is, when we do designs, I ask yeah. the question, so what is it about this project? What is it about this design? You know, I mean, why will someone leave the other developers to come to you? Yeah. So what are you offering? You know, instead of having development that everywhere is choked, uh, because we want to maximize profit, you know, like it's uh, the activity of every venture is make money, save money and grow business. So we try to center our development around this. So for the investors, if they're coming in, 
I mean, you want to live in an environment, it's good, the landscaping, the yeah. play area and all of that is there. You know, so you're not in a hurry looking for somewhere else to move to. True. You know, because of the comfort and the convenience. Many people usually don't believe that you can actually build a successful business in, Af in Africa or in Nigeria generally. So what do you have to say to those kind of people? Well, the, I know the challenges are much, yeah. right? But I always will say, I mean, with what we've done so far, there's no challenge that you cannot overcome, hmm. you know? And I, I kind of feel, I have developer friends that uh, right now, they started development in the US and okay. in some other countries. It's a lot easier. You know, so when you're coming from an environment where you have a lot of challenges mm -hmm. and then you go to other countries and where yeah. things are working, I mean, if they tell you you get a, your approval in 21, 21 days, days, you get it in 21 days. You get in 21 days. days. Yeah. Not uh, here that sometimes they tell you <laughs> it will take you one year. Yeah. You know, what I want people to believe is or to know is that there's nothing you cannot do regardless mm. of your location. Mm. You know, you just have to have that, that will to do it. You know, things will definitely work out. I mean, uh, one is your ability to be able to identify recognized opportunities and be able to take on them. You don't need to have everything before you get started. Whatever you have, just get started. Hmm. You know, it might be tough, but just get started. Cool. I mean, I, I just believe you can do anything. Anything. Anything at all. What do you think about this phrase uh, where people say Africa the future? The way we live, it's changing. Yeah. You know, our lifestyle is changing. Yeah. Now today you probably will be miserable if you don't have internet. Internet, <laughs> true. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> Very true. You know, so in terms of the market, I think the market is, is huge, it's strong, you know, and, uh, and it's growing. And with internet and more exposures, you know, people want more. In those days, people will go to the market, but this generation we don't go to the dirty market anymore. We we'll go to the grocery, grocery store. store yeah. So I, I think things are taking shape, and I, and I think in terms of thinking Africa in the future, I mean, you look at the FDI that is coming, a lot of people are investing True. in Africa and uh, investing in the lifestyle, you know, to be able to cash in on our new way of living. So hmm. I, I will agree with that as well. Yeah, I agree. There are a lot of young entrepreneurs or upcoming entrepreneurs out there who probably when they see this video, they're like, oh, like they, they feel inspired by somebody who is able to build a successful business in Africa. So what's your advice to them generally for a lot of people who want to build something like what you built? Keep at it. Keep at it. Keep at it. Okay. You know, uh, as in, I tell people, keep at it. Keep at it, it's um, regardless of the challenges. Because you all, there will always be challenges, but you have to keep at it. Especially, I mean, like those of us that didn't come from a wealthy, wealthy background, you know, so uh, there was no inheritance money for you to use to start a business. <laughs> true, true. It's, it's good you mentioned that. Yeah, there's no inheritance money for you to use to start a business, so keep at it. You know, getting more knowledge, acquire more knowledge, you know, for whatever business you want to do, you need to know. You know, to be more, you need to know more. Hmm. So you need to keep learning. When you make mistakes, you know, I mean, like when you fall, you dust up, you keep moving. So keep at it. That's what I have to say to people coming up. Say, just keep at, keep it. at it. Yeah. Awesome. So thanks a lot for like sharing your story with us. Thank we really, you, really Tyro. appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you, Tyro. So guys, I'm going to link um, the page to their development in the description below. If uh, probably you want to buy a house, 
or buy a property, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you want to invest. <laughs> if you want to invest too, if you want to invest in real yeah, estate. If you want to invest in real estate in yeah. the city of Abuja. Abuja. Yes. Just reach out to them and yeah. So that's all I have for you guys today. If you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you guys on the next one. Thank Peace. you.